نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مدل له وما يدل فلا هادي له وشر ون لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشر أن سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله خير النبي اجتباه وهدى للعالمين أرسله أرسله الله بدين الحق ليوذع دين كل ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأزواجه ومورية وأصحابه وتابعين وتابعين بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله أذكركم وإياي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى وذكركم بقوله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم حيث يقول يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوى الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وذكركم إياي بالحفظ القرآن الكريم والسنة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm going to begin this khutbah with a dua, which normally is not the ada, but I want to just explain something to you. And these few words here before we actually begin in it, this was a dua, but I want to read some of it, inshallah ta'ala. It says, Ya Allah, bless our journey from all those who are present and absent, and all those who intended to come but could not make it. We are here for your sake, do not turn us away. We seek your gentleness, yellow teeth. O oh Allah, grant us courage, wisdom, and sincerity, and compassion to be the answers of the prayers of others. You are the one who responds to the dua al-mujib, the all-hearing of Samir. Free our hearts of anxiety, anguish, or unwanted anger, from, or any bitterness, jealousy, and detach our hearts from loving anything that causes harm but gives us complacency in our deen. You are the source of peace, ya salam, and the one who enriches al-mughni. O oh Allah, envelop us in your divine love and help us to build a love for ourselves. We are weak and imperfect, but the perfection of your love stems from its embracing of us despite our being imperfect. You are the loving one, al-wadud, the passionate, compassionate one, al-Rahman. Free us from oppression, including depression by our own selves. And keep us from being oppressive, including oppressing against our own selves. This is a supplication that was sent out at the beginning of our Hajj. And however, I found it appropriate because this khutbah is almost like the beginning of, or the end of a year as tomorrow will most probably be the first of Muharram and we will sight the moon. And I think about this in stages. That if we are to talk about Hajj, you really have to talk about Ramadan. Because Ramadan, the scholars have said, is a spiritual preparation for the Hajj. And if Ramadan is a spiritual preparation for the Hajj, then what is the Hajj a preparation for? Hajj is a preparation for the ultimate meeting that we have with our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what I think about in this new year, in this new beginning, and reflections that I had from the Hajj, inshallah, that I will share with you, is really this concept of change. We have all of these New Year's resolutions at the beginning of the Gregorian calendar. Alhamdulillah, la ba's bi. It's a non-issue. We should be thinking about what type of changes we will make in our lives as this new year approaches, i.e. Allah, you have given me 360 days if we're talking about the lunar calendar. And I pray that you will give me another 360 so that I may change what I see in myself that is displeasing to you and I may be increased and enhanced in the things in which I do in which you are pleased with me. Allahumma ameen. On reflecting on this, the real similarity that I saw for those of us who have children that are starting the school year, be they an elementary school or whatever level they are, or college, was this reflecting on the Hajj and the beginning of this academic year. 
and I found some striking similarities. On the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, the Hujjaj moved from Mecca to Mina known as Yom al This day was known as the day of quenching the thirst, Yom al Why? It was given this name because the pilgrims were instructed to drink water to their, and fill their containers in preparation for the long journey ahead. The journey to Mina, Arafat, Muzdalifah, Mecca, the Jamarat, and then back to Mecca again. And they would also make their animals, make sure their animals were properly uh, hydrated to allow them to reach their destination. Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, do we trust in Allah or do we tie our camel? Tie your camel, then trust in Allah. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa The first similarity that I think about is this similarity that we send our children out to quench their thirst. And that's the thirst of knowledge. Let that be the goal when we send our children out for education. All of the accolades that will come with that and all the prestige and all of that will come because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate that in their lives if their heart is pure. If they are seeking to gain knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit humanity, not for a selfish interest, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of every affair after that. May Allah give us the courage to trust in His promises. Ameen. May we be inspired to understand and supplicate when Abdullah ibn Mubarak, who went to Mecca, one of the great scholars of Islamic history, when he went to the well of Zamzam and he drank from it and he faced the Kaaba and he said, Ya Allah, Ibn al-Muwali, narrated from Muhammad ibn Muqaddir, on Jabir radiallahu anhu, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet sallallahu had said, that water of Zamzam is for whatever it is drank for, and here I am drinking it to prevent the thirst on the day of judgment. And then he drank it. This is a heart that is alive. This is a heart that is alive. Now the other thing that I thought was very interesting and struck me this year, standing in front of the Kaaba and drinking Zamzam, is that the supplication for Zamzam starts off with, Allahumma inni as'alika ilman nafi'an, wa rizqan wasi'an, wa shifa'a min kulli da'in. Three things the Prophet Sallallahu asked for. Zamzam is for whatever it is drank for, whatever we want to make dua for, and what does the Prophet Sallallahu begin with? I ask you for beneficial knowledge. Which means what? Not all knowledge is beneficial. And how is it to turn from the scholars? It is the knowledge that will increase you in your journey to finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and entrance into Jannah. Now it doesn't mean that it will only be Islamic knowledge. Because the things that we do can lead us into that as well too from other sciences. I'll leave that there. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to quench our collective thirst from the water of Zamzam and from the river of Kawthir. Ameen. Quickly here, talking about this Yom Tarawiyah being in Mina. What are the similarities here? When we came to Mina, I was struck with the two qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, two attributes became very clear to me. His attribute of al-qabid and al-basit, the constrictor and the expander. When we entered the tents in Tamina, it was a space that was maybe to that first pillar and out to here for those of you that have been, and in that space you will find about 250 men and the women will be on the other side of the tent in the same condition. We had just moved from the expansion of luxury hotels in Mecca, a world-class buffet, to the constriction of the tents of Mina and processed food in box lunches. But once we're able to overcome the materialism, 
and see this for what it is, then this is when the understanding came to me, probably about three, five, four, five days into it. I'm a slow learner. That when we are faced with this constriction, when our nafs is squeezed, sleeping next to someone who's snoring all night, I can't sleep. Served a food when I'm really hungry, but I have to eat some white bread and have some milk that is not refrigerated with some cornflakes. Allah has decreed our risk for us 50,000 years before we were even created. So this all exists in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then I asked this question, or one of the scholars in our tent said, if Hajj is Arafat, the Prophet said, Al Hajju Arafat, meaning that Hajj is Arafat. If you only make the Harafat, Arafat, Hukba, I'm sorry, uh, uh, for a portion of this day, then Alhamdulillah you can make up the other aspects through a kafara, through a dispensation. So Al Hajj Al Arafat. He said, If Hajj is Arafat, then why do we spend so much time in Mina? And this is a valid question. And he said that the wisdom of spending the time in Mina can be found in our being exposed to fighting the temptations within ourselves as was the struggle of Ibrahim salam. And I thought this was profound. Because Ibrahim salam in Mina is a preparation for the Hujjaj as we said, for Arafat and also for the stoning of the Jamarat. But if we don't free ourselves of the temptations that exist within us, then what is the reality of our supplication in Arafah? And what is the reality of our stoning of the Jamarat? And I thought, what is the test of Ibrahim? The test of Ibrahim السلام, is one of separation. First, the separation of his father. The second, the command to separate from his wife. And the third, to separate himself from his son. What type of temptation do you think that might exist inside of us if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and commanded us to separate ourselves from our father? To separate ourselves from our wife, to separate ourselves from our son, and the manner in which it was done. Take your wife to a barren land and leave her there. And then to have her, alhamdulillah, with the courage that she faces, Haja alayhi salam, the courage that she faced asking Ibrahim alayhi salam, he walks away from her and she says, and this is in the Ibn, uh, uh, Ibn Kathir, she asks him, has your Lord ordered you to this? And he says in the commentary, the question was so tough, Ibrahim salam could not turn around. She asks him a second time, he does not turn around. She asks him the third time, and he turns around and affirms it. She says, and my Lord will never leave me. May Allah give us Iman. May Allah increase our Iman. And then as we know, the separation of the son. Yes, we look at Ibrahim salam's willingness to sacrifice his son, but we also have to look at this sacrifice that the son is ready to be sacrificed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first separation that happens between his father is in al abid it's forever. So he doesn't know, will that separation be the same for his wife and then for his child? But he doesn't hesitate, and that's a lesson that's being taught for us. That shaitan appears to him in multiple places. This is when it came to me. Shaitan appears in multiple places in Mina. And that's what signifies this multiple stonings of the Jamarat. That at each one of those places where shaitan is coming to tell him to disobey the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's when he's stoned. And that's what we're following. To stone the things with inside of us that call us to the disobedience and not following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reality of the stoning. So what we should take from that is that this test will continue. If you look at the test of his father, is that not sufficient? And then the test of his wife, is that not sufficient? 
and then the test of his son, is that not sufficient? And then cast into a fire, is that not sufficient? The test will continue and continue and continue until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is a prophet of Allah, and then read the seerah of our beloved Mustafa, who is Habib Allah, and the test that he endured, then who are we? Then who are we? So then, from Mina, time is short here. I thought about this temptation. الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرد فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدان. Allah says in Quran. And I thought if Mina is about temptations, and look at this verse. Allah talking about the Hajj in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat 197. He says, Hajj is during the well-known months. So whoever has made it obligatory upon himself, يعني you are performing the Hajj, فلا رفث. No sexual relations. Wala fusuqa, no disobedience, ma'asiya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wala jidala, and no arguing. And I thought to myself, why these three things? And the first thing that came to me on the first with relations, Allah says in Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, after Baqarah, Zuyila ninnasi hubba shahwati min an nisa. Beautiful for mankind is the love and the joys that a man has for a woman and offspring. And Allah continues for the other things. So what does that mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing our nature. Our nature that is inside of us to the things that will distract us, i.e. tempt us. Mina is about dealing with our temptations. So the first one, la rafatha. The second one, la fusuqa. No disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you enter into the state of ihram. La fusuqa. And Imam Muslim begins in his book, in the chapter of the book of paradise, in its descriptions, its bounties, and its inhabitants. In his sahih, he has a hadith in which Anas ibn, uh, ibn Malik and Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu both report from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the hadith where it says حُفَّةِ الْجَنَةِ الْبِالْمَكَارِهِ وَحُفَّةِ الْنَارُ بِالشَّهْوَاتِ that the, Allah, the Prophet sallallahu has said in the hadith that Jannah is surrounded by hardships and the hellfire is surrounded by our desires la fusuqa it's inherent inside of us but we have that choice for either and then the last one uh, as we said, that in that jannah, as with jannah, the nar is 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 surrounded by the shahwat, and then the last one for la jidala, right? No argument, no arguing, and again, looking at this essence. لَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثْلٍ وَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا. We have made everything clear in this Quran. Allah says, we have made everything clear in this Quran presented through every description for people but man has but man is ever prone to disputation so literally allah is saving us from the things within ourselves because of what we're standing there for the essence of the hajj is what it's absolute forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah is telling you that if you want my absolute forgiveness then yes, deal with my constriction, deal with my expansion, deal with Mina, deal with Muzdalifa, deal with Arafat, deal with the stoning of the Jamarat, and deal with the realities that exist inside of yourself, and I will forgive you like the day that you were born. That's the hadith of Hajj Mabrur. When the Hujaj returned, the dua of Hajj Mabrur, and the Prophet says, what is a Hajj Mabrur? It says, Hajj Mabrur is an absolute acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which the Haji returns with no sin as the day that they were born. Allahumma, make us from these people, O Allah. Wasa'i mashkur. And the gratitude that is expressed in following the actions of our mother, Hajj alayhi salam.
And I thought about this quickly in the Jidal. But the Prophet ﷺ, regarding Layatul Qadr, he says, I came out to inform you about the night of Layatul Qadr, but as so and so and so and so quarreled, its knowledge was taken away and I forgot it, and maybe it was better for you. So now look for it in the seventh, ninth, and fifth nights and the last ten nights. If argumentation between three Muslims caused the knowledge of Laylatul Qadr to be separated, removed from the Prophet ﷺ's knowledge, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us his displeasure with that knowledge, and then in this verse as well too. Fala jidana. Fala jidana fil hajj. May Allah give us the openings of the hajj. May Allah allow us to see the realities lived out in our life in the Hajj after the Hajj. Aqulu qawli hadra sakfi lalukum misal wa'mini yaqum bisakfullah innahu kuwa ghafuru rahim. إن الحمد لله حمد كثير كما أمر وشرو لا إله إلا الله وشرو أن سيدنا محمد عبد الرسول وعباد الله وذكركم بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى وذكركم بقوله سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول في الحديث اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم وذكركم وذكركم بشرف مكان مصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول الله في القرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد كما بركت وصليت على سيد إبراهيم وعلى آله سيد إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. very briefly just closing I asked a young brother who was on the Hajj, his first time ever on Umrah or Hajj, visiting the Haramain. I asked him, uh, how was your Hajj? And he said, it's powerful. He said, Allah will break you down. He removes your dunya from you, and then continues to remove your dunya from you, and then throws you in the dirt. I said, what do you mean? He said, coming from Mecca, we had to take less stuff in Mina. And then coming to Mina, coming to Muzdalifah from Mina, they took more stuff from us, and then we had to sleep in the dirt. And I thought to myself, that's our journey. That's our life. All of our dunya will be stripped from us, and we will be thrown into the dirt. May Allah have mercy upon us. Allahumma rahman wa'minin wa wa'minat. Al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat. Al-Ahya'i minhum wa al-Amwat, ya rahman rahmin. اللهم كن معنا ولا تكون علينا عبدا يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل منا واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم افتح علينا فتول عارفين وفقنا توفيق الصالحين وفعلنا بالقرآن وذكر الحكيم اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم نكون بين يديك يا رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملا على إلى يوم الدين اللهم أرحم أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم وانصر أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم خفف عن أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ألطف عن أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم وانصر أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نصر من عندك يا رب العالمين اللهم تب علينا إنك أنت تواب الرحيم وارحمنا إنك أنت بنا رحيم يا رب العالمين وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ميسفون والسلام المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله